Hello and welcome everybody. This is the first part of our landed cost module review in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. The first part will concentrate on goods in transit functionality. Let's begin. First, we will create a new purchase order. And add a single item. Let's set a quantity to 75. In order for us to enable goods in transit functionality, we have to have certain components in place for that purchase order. Component number one is terms of delivery. This is a FOB terms of delivery that was set up for that purchase order. And if we look at it, we have to make sure that this terms of delivery has goods in transit management checkbox set to yes. Number two is our warehouse. We have to make sure that the warehouse on our PO line has a goods in transit warehouse set, which is a new type of warehouse, as well as an under delivery warehouse set up as well, which is another new type of warehouse. And on top of that, make sure that you have default receipt location set on our warehouse 11 and have to make sure that this location, location 11, also exists in our goods in transit warehouse as well. Otherwise, we will have issues receiving our goods in transit order. And number three is set up on the release product itself. If we look at the item group and scroll to purchase order, we have to make sure that we have a new account specified here under landed cost goods in transit warehouse. So this account has to be populated in order for the system to receive and create that goods in transit order. With those components in place, we have a new order that we can now add to our voyage. The order number is 407, so let's create a new voyage. We have to select a vessel. We, can, we will go through these details uh, in a subsequent video. This is our voyage edit screen. Right now, we have to make sure that we have to populate the correct purchase order. So this is a grid on the top that filters it. Then we see a, an inbound order, which is a PO number 407, which is the one we just created. We see the lines. So we're gonna select the line right here. And we click on add to staging list. That then we'll have to go to view staging list. We will see that we have lines in staging and now we have to add this line to a new or existing container because we don't have any containers for that voyage yet. We have to add it to a new shipping container. We'll have to select the container itself. Let's say container two, other additional fields, all optional, and we're gonna click okay. So now we see that our PO line was added to a shipping container that belongs to that voyage. We're gonna go back, I'm gonna go back here, refresh the screen, see our brand new voyage. We will open up and here it is. The next step is to review the goods in transit order right here. We do not see it yet. Why? Because we now need to go and invoice the PO. So we will go to manage on our voyage and we're gonna post an invoice. Uh, you will see that the product receipts are not allowed for those orders that are subject to goods in transit functionality. So we can post a PO invoice either from the voyage, which we will do here, or from the purchase order itself. So we're going to click on post invoice. Have to make sure that our quantity here is defaulted to order quantity, not packing slip quantity or product receipt quantity, because we don't have any. We're going to populate our invoice number. update our matching status, not performed to past, and I'm gonna post. So we have an issue, purchase order has not been confirmed, which is my bad here. So we have to come back to the purchase order itself, confirm it. Which is a good point so now, once that is confirmed, I'm going to try to invoice it again. So here's our invoice. 
update matching status and post. Once that PO is posted and invoiced, then we will see a new type of order create. So let's take a look at the transactions for that item. So here's our item and let's take a look at transactions. So we see a lot of transactions that have been created here. We see that the purchase order has been purchased right here and then it was sold from the same warehouse to that goods in transit order that ends with 0005. So these transactions kind of resemble our um, scrapping from using the return orders using disposition codes. So right now we see that, and the result here is that we have ordered 75 units in our warehouse 11, but the inventory itself, if we look at hand inventory, is physically in our goods in transit warehouse 11 GIT, but it actually was reserved and belongs and ordered in our main warehouse 11. So this is a new functionality that allows us to have an invoice posted for the purchase order without physically receiving those goods in our warehouse yet. So now we can review, go back to our voyage, and we can look at our goods in transit orders. So here's our order right here. And now we can go and receive it. That's where the location defaulting will, is important. Otherwise, you will get an error that location is missing. And unfortunately, you will not be able to do any registrations or populate that location field itself. And from here, we can click OK to receive an order and go back to our inventory transactions here or on hand inventory, refers the screen, screen. And now we see that we have 75 units physically available in our main receiving warehouse 11. That is all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next part, take care.